Hey, don't try what you're about to see at home. We're what you call experts. That's right. We do this for a living. On this episode of Mythbusters, there's peril on the uh, high seas as the team tests out cures for seasickness. Well, they may work for Barry Manilow, but they don't work for crap for me. Whenever the Mythbusters have sailed for science, Adam's dirty little secret has been chucked up. He and the sea just don't agree, and it's time to find a solution. Well, Adam, as we've seen, you have a problem with seasickness. We definitely need to find something for you, but um, things that are pharmacological often have side effects like drowsiness and dizziness and things that you don't want to do in a table saw. Yeah, well... I mean, there are also a lot of non-pharmaceutical remedies out there. I mean, there's wrist straps, there's electrical stimulation, there's sprays. These days, there are non-pharmaceutical cures aplenty. And the Mythbusters are going to put them to the test. But the ocean is a fickle place. One day it's chucktastic, but the next could be mirror flat. Sadly for Adam, Jamie's got a plan that guarantees the gratuitous gagging. I think what we need to do is something more like what NASA does. That is build a chair that moves you around in a certain way that's designed to make you seasick. And then every day we'll come back in and try, uh, you know, a brand new remedy. You sound really excited about this experiment. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> when it comes to making people puke, NASA are the experts. They've got the zero gravity plane, famously called the Vomit Comet. But believe it or not, the real spew machine is the seasick chair. At just seven revolutions per minute, it's surprisingly effective. And Carrie's copying this lethal NASA design that the team can then ride right here in the shop. But why exactly do people get seasick? Well, Adam, you know, you're not alone in getting motion sickness. Um, fishermen get it, Navy personnel get it, and our researchers even turned up that 90% of NASA's astronauts get it. Well, it is always a relief not to be alone in a specific ailment, but what causes motion sickness? Why are so many people affected by it? You're on a boat or something, and your eyes are telling you that the, the walls and the furniture, the table, is all stationary. But your other senses, uh, your inner ear, your fine muscle controls, all of those things are telling you something else. So it's this uh, confusing input of signals. And the result is that I throw up. It's all down to the senses not singing from the same song sheet. And the poor old brain being barraged with conflicting information, well, just can't compute. Only people who get seasick can help find a cure that works. So before the experiment can start, the whole team must go for a spin to see who feels the effects. Go. And likely spewer, Adam, is up first. I gotta tell you, it's already pretty disorienting. All right, Jamie's gonna time it, and I'm gonna tell you what to do with your head. Forward, back, left, right. The time it takes NASA to induce seasickness varies depending on the victim. I'm starting to sweat. Right. Back. Let's stop it. So you're claiming this is it for you? I'm claiming I already feel pretty queasy. After three and a half minutes, Adam staggers off knowing he's just become test subject number one. And will he be joined by Jamie? Given that this machine is designed to make you sick, um, I would say that it's entirely possible that I'll get sick. He will ride that chair, he will swallow his vomit, he will do whatever it takes to keep the myth up that he is completely unsusceptible. So we're never going to get any symptoms out of him no matter what. His self-control is gargantuan. Hey. But Carrie's got other ideas. She's trying everything to turn Jamie green. Back. Forward. Back. Forward. Back. Left. Forward. Right. <laughs> Back. Forward. Back. 
after half an hour, how's he doing? I'm kind of like bored a little bit. He's just a little too amused with this. It's starting to take me off. <laughs> That's it. You made it. With Sea Dog Jamie as fit as a fiddle, Adam's still waiting for a barf buddy. Sorry. But worryingly for him, neither Carrie nor Tori. This is fun. I could do this all day. Succumb to the chair. Grant! That just leaves Grant. We've got a plan for you. Forward. Back. Forward. It's an evil plan that soon seems to be working. I feel Back. something coming up in my throat. But Forward. I'm not Back. in any immediate danger of spewing. Forward. No? Well, Left. ten minutes later, that all changes. Uh-oh. So Grant's going to be Adam's puke partner. But before the clinical trials can begin, the team is going to hit the road with another myth. Later, Adam spews for science. Stop, stop. I hate this chair. Coming right up, the search for a seasickness solution. Give us a break. Don't try what you're about to see at home. Adam and Grant are putting their lunches on the line as the Mythbusters seek a seasickness solution. Each day, they're going to test a different non-pharmaceutical remedy. And first up is the homeopathic tongue tingler. That burned! <laughs> so uh, apparently the directions are a spray under the tongue as often as needed. But 10 minutes in and five sprays later, it's not going well. Grant, would you rely on this remedy in a seasick situation? If I were out on the open ocean, this wouldn't be my only choice. Good job, because soon after, things turn nasty. There, there's a bucket in front of me. Well, that remedy doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so the okay. tongue spray clearly doesn't float Grant's boat. <laughs> Next! <laughs> but Adam's not having much joy either. Just four minutes, and he's had enough. All right, let's turn it up. Turn it up. You look a little green. I feel a little green. After the boys make a full recovery, it's trial number two. Next up in our quest for a non-pharmaceutical remedy for seasickness, uh, we've got these little wrist straps, which I think I'm supposed to wear on my wrists. And supposedly, Barry Manilow doesn't travel anywhere without them, and maybe I won't either after this test. They're especially effective when sailing to the Copacabana. I feel better already. All right, let's bring on the spew. Oh, yeah. This time, Adam spins first. You're starting to like it. There's nothing to like about this. And sure enough, 90 seconds later, these aren't working at all. Let's stop. It's all, I mean, it's like instantaneous today. I don't know why. Well, they may work for Barry Manilow, but they don't work for crap for me. And neither do they work for Grant. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. So it's chair two, remedies zip. gets seasickness so badly that he vowed to find a solution. So he and Grant have become chuck chums as they test out different cures. But they're avoiding regular medicine because they want a remedy that is side effect free. And today, it's ginger pills. So you took your ginger tablets an hour ago? I did. You're all set to go? Yeah. 
The roots of ginger have been used by Far Eastern sailors for centuries. And for Adam, ginger seems to be working. Are you feeling any signs of nausea? Uh, no. Nothing? Hey, maybe this one works. It seems ginger has made Adam impervious to nausea. Even the sickening whiff of Carrie's sneakers has no effect. I mean, at this point, I'm trying to think of things that are sickening, like when you throw up and you can taste it in your nose and you've got to blow it out of your nose, that kind of stuff. It's still not doing anything. After 25 minutes of thinking sick-inducing thoughts, oh, it's really all awesome. smiles for Adam. Good job. And the same is true for Grant. He does a full half hour with no illness at all. Ginger, at least for these guys, gets the thumbs up. Next day, it's the final non-pharmaceutical test, the electric stimulation wristband. God, that feels weird. I feel it all the way up through my two middle fingers. Small shocks on the P6 acupuncture point can relieve the effects of seasickness in some sufferers. It's a newfangled remedy. But for Adam, it's the same old story. Oh. No, we gotta stop. Stop. Stop, stop. 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 God, get this thing off. Oh. Grant, too, feels little effect. It seems that both Adam and Grant are suffering the age-old problem of clinical trials, mind games. But Jamie has a cutting plan. Jamie, I've been thinking about this a little bit. How do we know they're not fooling themselves into believing that the remedies are not working? There's a tried and true and very simple way of dealing with that, and that's called the placebo. So what we're going to do is give them something that we're going to tell them is an over-the-counter pharmaceutical remedy that, you know, they'll be thinking that if anything works this well. And what we're actually going to be giving them is something, you know, useless like a vitamin or something else. <laughs> that's clever. Vitamins are useless? Well, for seasickness. So this time, Adam thinks he's taken a regular drug treatment. But in fact, he's had a vitamin. Will his brain trick his body into believing that this remedy works, or will he get as sick as ever? Oh, oh stop, stop. Okay. I hate this chair. Well, you're looking at three minutes and 35 seconds. <laughs> no psychological effects with Adam. What you see is what you get. But Grant... Spin me, baby. 20 minutes in, and it's this point that Grant usually begs for mercy. But not today. This is among the most effective, if not the most effective, remedy that I've had so far. He's fallen for the placebo, which means his previous results can no longer be trusted. What's the result with you on this one, Grant? Uh, I think it works. You think I, it works? I'm feeling like it, it was trying to do something, but, you know, it was just staying down there. I apologize for this. It, it, it wasn't my idea, but what you just took was B12. It was a placebo. Oh. At the very moment that Jamie revealed that what we had received was a placebo, uh, my very first thought was, ah, oh, crap, we have to do this again. But only once more, today with the real medicinal drug. And sure enough, it works. I can definitely feel the pharmaceuticals in my body and I can feel how they're not quite holding back all the sick feelings. They're just holding back enough that, you know, I'm functional. Although not that functional. Sorry, I actually just fell asleep there for a second. <laughs> Seasickness has been a real problem for Adam, but will that still be the case? After six stomach-churning tests, the results are in. Well, it looks like the pharmaceutical remedy definitely worked on both of you, but you both look a little loopy. I don't think this is going to be the best working condition. No? No. 
No. <laughs> so did we find a non-pharmaceutical remedy that'll work for either of you that's not going to leave you looking like you guys do? <laughs> I think the only thing that really worked without any, you know, major side effects was a ginger pill. The next time I go out on a boat, I'm definitely taking those. I mean, this is a really hard thing to test. I mean, it's, seasickness is very individual, but I think that we can pretty much say ginger pills are plausible. I would agree. Oh, <laughs>